last in will be Texas Boy at 25 to 1. Stand by for a start. And they're off. And a really good beginning for all. The starter caught him in a great line there in mid pack. First out is What's One More? Right along the inside, JMR Silent Lake and JMR Victory Lap. As they move along the back stretch, Dr. Rapid spots just in behind the speed ahead of Triglab. Giant Balls of Fire is second to last. Three more to the trailer. Texas Boy laying off the tempo. So it's JMR Silent Lake that has been designated to lead it onto the turn over Strolling Posse and JMR Victory Lap on the outside. Dr. Robert sneaks through into the front four along the fence. They'll turn for the payoff. After a front quarter of a quick 22 and three, making all of this tempo has been JMR Silent Lake into the stretch, now being tackled by JMR Victory Lap and Giant Balls of Fire is on fire on the grandstand side. Through the stretch, it's still JMR Victory Lap. Strolling Posse has come on through. Giant Balls of Fire just a little too late. JMR Victory Lap wins by a length. Giant Balls of Fire, an eye-catching rally for second. Strolling Posse was third, and what's one more was fourth as JMR Victory Lap and Juan Crawford score in the first with a win time of a minute one-fifth. Nikki Alderson going to go off slight second choice. Eddie Bear completes the line. Stand by for a start. Race two at the post. And they're off. Eddie Bear was very slowly away. First to take the lead is Molly Terra on the flank of Analyze What. Coming out third was Well You Know. Second to last, Marvell. And after a tentative beginning, Eddie Bear is back of the group. So into the turn they'll go with Molly Terra on the flank of Analyze What, and they are being stalked well by well, you know. About six more lengths to Marvell, and four more to the trailer throughout Eddie Bear. Moving around to the top of the stretch, it's been Analyze What, and Molly Terra stalked by well, you know. Molly Terra takes top of the stretch lead. Front quarter was 23 and one fifth. Molly Terra trying to, trying to put away Analyze What once and for all. And not doing enough is well, you know. So Molly Terra is almost home free. Molly Terra comes up to the wire to win it a length and a quarter. Analyze what a pursuing second. Well, you know, needed more for third. And then Marvell and Eddie Bear last to finish. Molly Terra, the four and a half furlongs, 53, one fifth. Is classy Scarlet after a tentative beginning. Round to the top of the stretch. Orphan Queen. I have feelings matching stride for stride. An enormously long way back. It's nice to be nice is almost there. It's nice to be nice. Got there. Up for second. It was Michu at home. And then back to Ginger Candy and Giovanna Ponti saving fourth. It's nice to be nice. And Mark Lee Buchanan in the race three upset. They're off, and they've come out well together in the middle of the gate. Omar has had a good beginning. 
Down tight to the inside is Stolen Identity. Stolen Identity will set up the early speed, chased by Omar. Then to the extreme outside, we find Master Connor and Uncle Lou. Balder was a little bit tentatively away in his second to last, and then Majestic Heist to the rear of the field. So going to show the short way home, if at all possible. Stolen Identity steals away on Omar by three into the turn. And then Master Connor and Uncle Lou up wide. Belder is skimming paint off the fence. And three more lengths to the long shot. Majestic Heist trying to get away and build up an insurmountable lead. Inside the corner pole is Stolen Identity, 22 and one. A long opening front panel, but he may have bottomed them out. Stolen Identity by a big margin and then Omar. Balder has not much more to offer. Uncle Lou on the outside. Stolen Identity has stolen away. At eight to five, Stolen Identity left the field back in Niagara Falls and wins it all alone under the line. Here's Omar to save second. Balder is third and Uncle Lou is fourth. Then Majestic Heist and Master Connor last to finish as Stolen Identity wins in an eight to five route in 103 and two. Harmony Hall last stepping up. Locked and loaded. Race five. They're off. And they came out as a great looking line there. Midnight Snack Attack and Helen Vanek hustles this one to the early lead. And crossing out from the extreme outside is Flashman to join the early front end fracas. And then Dubois and my Marc Andre to the rear of the field. Running along the inside by two more is the Spinos on the flank of Harmony Hall to the rear of the field. Round the bend they'll go. Abruptly backing away was Desbois there. The favorite looks to be in big trouble as they move around to the top of the stretch. And it's been a long battle for Midnight Snack Attack with Flashman from the extreme outside. My Marc Andre is picked up third. Desbois still in a lot of trouble, but not out of the question yet. And into the stretch they come. Coming away with the lead, my Marc Andre, 23 and 46 and one. Midnight Snack Attack is battling on and going to go tooth and nail down to the finish. And rallying on the outside is Flashman. Flashman, Midnight Snack Attack. Midnight Snack Attack by the Blue Shadow Roll holds off the Flashman. Desbois did eventually save third. My Marc Andre had to fade to fourth. Running time 58 one fifth. Win photo will be called. It's tight with Midnight Snack Attack trying to edge out Flashman. Extensions in. Stand by for a start. Race six at the post. They're off. No extensions. Pretty good beginning with New York Mint, Princess Morrow along the inside. Stella Terra is going to be a pace factor right up there. Running on the outside, that's Jack's memory in tight quarters with Baby Luna. Two more lengths to Classy Vision as the trailer. New York Mint takes immediate advantage, but no extensions looks to run right up with that one on the pace as they round the turn and head over to the Fort Erie backstretch. Tracking them from third is Jack's memory. Two more lengths back to Classy Vision, Baby Luna, Princess Morrow along the inside. 
they went the opening quarter in the sensible enough 24 seconds flat. No extensions allowed to lope along on the lead there on the flank of New York Mint. Baby Luna is the one running out widest of all, overtaking Jack's memory. Princess Morrow along the inside. Another length to Stella Terra, bravening up just right there in behind horses. And about eight more lengths back of the field to Classy Vision. They'll run onto the turn. And the complexion of this one has totally changed. New York Mint made the lead briefly. Baby Luna with a wide sweeping move. No extensions has backed away. It's a beaten favorite this day. Baby Luna takes the lead clearly at the top of the stretch after running the half in 48 and two. Baby Luna is out on the lead. Jack's memory is tracking from a long way back. Out widest of all is Classy Vision coming from last with New York Mint. Late stretch lead as Jack's memory moves up. Jack's memory at five to two kicks clear of the field to win it. Jack's memory by close to three over Baby Luna. Classy Vision was third, Princess Morrow fourth. New York Mint was fifth in the high five as Jack's memory and Juan Crawford win it in 128.
And that music must mean it's showtime in Fort Erie. Welcome back, everyone, for another wonderful week of live 2020 racing action from Fort Erie Racetrack in the beautiful Fort Erie, Niagara, Buffalo region, counting down the minutes to post at 1.20 p.m. for the first of seven big races today. Thanks to all of you who rode in with such overwhelmingly positive reaction to the turf races we kicked off here last week and uh, lots more of those on the docket for today and tomorrow. We are happy to report kind of another Chamber of Commerce summer day out there. It was quite breezy and chilly this morning. That's all gone. The breeze is laying down. The temperature is rising and we're expecting a uh, top out in the lower 70s this day. Just ideal. The main track is fast and just like a billiard table out there. Thanks to the track crew. The turf course is playing firm and beautiful and we're all set for the great racing action from Fort Erie Racetrack. Thanks for being with us. Close to spectators, thank you for understanding. We invite you to always follow us on FortErieRacing.com. We have a, a major storyline going into the final race and it's a good one today. Ten horses on the turf course at five furlongs with a jackpot high five carryover of $8,168. This pool ex expected to easily exceed the ten dollars to $12,000 range by the time they load into the gate for the final race today, the jackpot high five carryover, $8,100 plus and building. And our live racing schedule, easy to remember right through to the end of the meet in mid-October this year. Monday and Tuesday, first post at 1.20 p.m., preceded by our live pre-race TV show at 12.45 p.m. When you become a member of HPIBet.com, you get $100 when you bet $100, and the first bet is on HPIBet.com. You can wager online or on site anytime with HPIBet.com, wagering on almost 500 tracks from around the world, and you can watch four live streams from tracks at the same time. HPIBet rewards much more HPIBet.com. Be sure to join for free today. Our race replay show is back and going great guns this year. That's on your TV Niagara every Thursday at 8 p.m. And on the regional Kojiko system, it's channel 700 on the HD scale. Your TV Niagara bringing you our race replays and highlights show Thursdays at 8 p.m. Channel 700 on the local Kojiko system in Fort Erie, Niagara Falls and the entire Niagara region. And a big upgrade for our signal this year on our website so you, you can now watch live in high definition at FortErieRacing.com. That's FortErieRacing.com now in HD. Stand by upcoming. The program and weight changes. In the first race, to my Mark Andre, two pounds over. Four, Mad Sam, also two over. Five, Spinos, one over. And six, Rock Barton, two pounds over. In race two, two, Chairman's Venom, four over. Three, Gabby's Ballerina, and five, Madame Bovary, numbers three and five in race two. Each two pounds over. Under the third race, two Red Roland, five Jade's Journey, each two over. Fourth race, one It's Nice to Be Nice, four pounds over. We have a vet scratch out of race four. Five Rebel Lioness will not go. Vet scratch of five, Rebel Lioness, out of race four, start of the late 20 cent pick four. 
from race five of Vet Scratch of two Sepulinas. Three time two dance is a first time gelding. Four Dr. Robert, two pounds over. Sixth race, one strategic vision, two pounds over. Four Mocal, four pounds over. Seventh and final race. Number one, dressed in chocolate, first time Lasix, and two pounds over. Five, my final trick, four pounds over. Six, awesome flight, one pound over. And number seven, Einstein's babe, two pounds over. Welcome back everyone, already plowing into the third week of the 2020 campaign here at Fort Erie Racetrack and already the uh, leading jockey and leading trainer standings are heating up in a big way. Of course you remember uh, two weeks ago back on June 2nd opening day, trainer Joe Humber swept with all three of his starters in concert with rider Sonny Singh. Others have uh, had great starts here. It's going to be a compelling battle to watch in the jockey and trainer standings all throughout this year here at Fort Erie Racetrack. And without further ado, let's try to select you some winners on today's program. The first race, the allowance field going to travel five furlongs on the turf course. I'm going one, seven and six in this situation. <coughs> With a little bit of trepidation on one, get the news, uh, has not raced thus far as you can see in 2020, but does have three useful looking workouts coming into this race. Also a, a trainer claim late last year, Louis Cappy went up to Woodbine and plucked to get the news for the uh, $7,500 $7, price tag last November. So on this basis of the uh, useful workouts, three of them, and the trainer claim angle, maybe get the news, will get first across the wire in the first race. I also like the chances of seven Seamus that we saw develop right here before our own eyes last year and become a winner. And we know for a fact Pierre Mailhot gets along great with this horse. You can see his statistics, uh, 13 months so far on the season, no winners yet. That's going to change soon, I believe. It could happen right here in the first race for rider Pierre Mailhot. Number six, Rock Barton takes a drop down in class. You're getting that Joe Humber and Sunny Singh hot combination but this kind I have uh, some trepidation ranking any higher because of the O, uh, make it one for 16, lifetime win statistic, a skinny win statistic there for number six, Rock Barton in the first. Actually, in the daily racing form, going on top with Rock Barton in spite of the low win percentage, the morning line sides with me. That's Bill McGurr from Equibase.com who is our clocker and morning line odds setter and chart caller. He is also on board with one Get the News in the first race to kick off our great looking Monday program and the first pick three. In race two, Maiden Claiming Field to travel six furlongs over on the main track. Hot Copy is my top call. Battled long and hard last time with Stella Tara who was a well-meant winner but Hot Copy raced absolutely great, I thought, on that occasion. And now makes a, a kind of an interesting classification move here by the connections, Michael Blake, Annette Blake, Mark Stout, uh, choosing to take this one from maiden special weight to maiden claiming. So uh, in theory, this uh, classification might be a little bit softer company and see Hot Copy get a deserved win in this spot. Number four, one four Nikki on the trainer change angle. Two, Chairman's Venom gets Helen Vanek in the saddle off to her customary great start this year. But I'm going with Hot Copy on top of the ticket in race two. And that is a total consensus call for Ashley Mayu, our track handicapper, the daily racing form, and morning line odds setter, Bill McGurr. Now race three will kick off the program's 20 cent pick five. Five furlongs on the main track for the Claiming group, 4,500 down to 4,000. 512, I'm going Jade's Journey. On the basis of uh, moving down in class, 
and having had a needed start. So a little bit of foundation for the four-year-old filly here, Jade's journey, may be able to find this field to her liking on the drop down in class. Kevin Buttigieg, by the way, I still predict is going to be a contender for top trainer this year here at Fort Erie Racetrack. And I think his uh, first win of the year is at hand, if not this race, very, very soon for the Kevin Buttigieg outfit. I don't get much agreement from the other selector selectors though. Actually goes with number one, Glorious Freedom, who was a good second to a well-meant winner last time. The Daily Racing Form and Bill McGurr's Morning Line also putting Glorious Freedom on the top of the ticket, but I'm gonna stick with Jade's Journey and that combination of Kevin Buttigieg and Sonny Singh in race three to kick off this program's 20 cent pick five. On to the fourth race, and we move back onto our lush turf course. We have a vet scratch of number five, Rebel Lioness. I'm going two, one, and three in this spot. Pulled the goalie with the trainer change angle, and uh, Elliot Sullivan has had an outstanding start to the meet here in Fort Erie. You know that he uh, spent the winter down at Mahoning Valley and Mountaineer, but uh, most of his starters at Mahoning Valley and uh, on opening day here, he had them ready and well meant. Maybe this will be the spot for Elliot Sullivan and Emil Ram Sammy. Look at the trainer jockey statistic there. 40% strike rate when Elliot Sullivan teams up with Emil Ram Sammy. So uh, it's a total consensus call here on pulled the goalie in the fourth race. It's nice to be nice. Gave uh, Nancy and Robert Warner a great start and a winner early on the meet last time out. Could be a big time contender there. Also number three, Fleck. Had a good closing third place finish last out and also merits some respect, but total consensus there for the Elliott Sullivan, Emil Ramsambi Camo in race four. Race four will start this program's late 20 cent pick four. On to race five, where we have a vet scratch of two Sepalinas. I'm going one, three and five in this spot with Sophia's Slugger getting top call. A trainer change here, Barrington Cito has had a great start to the meet here. Six starters, a win, a couple of seconds and a third and a, a very good start to the meet. 67% of his starters on the ticket so far for Barrington Cito's operation. Kirk Johnson, that's an aberration in my view, uh, that statistic for him to be 0 for 16 on the meet. He is a multiple meet leading rider here at Fort Erie Racetrack. That is going to be a uh, potential reversion to the mean situation very soon, I believe, where Kirk Johnson will break into the win column in a big way, and it could start right here in race five today. Everybody on board, including Ashley, the Daily Racing Forum, and Bill McGurr's morning line on one Sophia's slugger in race five to start off the program's last rolling pick three. Sixth race will kick off the last of the rolling doubles. Five furlongs on the main track. I'm going three, two, and four in this situation. We haven't seen this horse almost dancer since last August. Maiden special weight wide open lengths winner back at that time for owner and trainer Michael Bennett. Chris Husband's had the ride that day, so he will be familiar with almost dancer in race six who moves over into allowance company for this five for long test. Number two, Mocal picks up the trainer change angle, trainer Sharon Chicago. Her barn has had a great start to the meet this year here at Fort Erie Racetrack. And number four, Flamborough Jewel uh, gets a um, more promising potential classification here and may be able to fare much better. In fact, our uh, track selector, Ashley Mayu puts Flamborough Jewel on the top of the ticket for the Claudia Rapstein, Pierre Mail Hot Connections. The Daily Racing Form and Morning Line go with five Salem Street on the top of the ticket as trainer Nigel Burke sends out his first starter of the meet. So lots of uh, divergent opinions there on race six, this allowance test to kick off the program's final rolling double. And the seventh race, all the buzz today because of the jackpot high five carryover, anticipated to be 
well over the ten to twelve thousand dollar range by the time they go into the gate for race seven and it's going to be a wonderful field of ten for five furlongs on the turf course this should be great and a great spectacle I'm going to go a, a little bit against the grain take one that's in the morning line at seven to two and that's number eight not a house frau a very creditable second I thought to a logical and deserving winner last time by the name of Perfect Mine, who was a dominating favorite. Not a housefrau, got a needed start there against the Maiden Special Weight Company and comes back today with that needed start under her belt. Uh, Trickeration is going to take some respect. I can't put this one on top in good conscience because of the 0 for 19 statistic for lifetime starts and no single win yet. But this could be the spot for this one to be much more competitive. And number 10, Forrest Lass, picks up the trainer change. This could be the logical price play. Melanie Pinto demonstrated a great touch on the turf course here at Fort Erie in recent years. Uh, she'll need to be at her best from out in post 10 today. But the Daily Racing Form selector believes it's a big possibility for Forrest Lass to be on top of the ticket. The morning line goes with number nine, Trickeration, who had a good closing effort last time and was still looking live at the wire but remains winless lifetime. Myself and Ashley Mayu that you're going to be hearing a lot more from throughout the day. We landed on number eight, not a house frau, in the seventh race. Completing the program with a bang we probably will see with that 20 cent jackpot high five and the carryover building to probably $10,000 or more into the pool. We want to thank you again for being a part of the Live Racing Action 2020 from Fort Erie Racetrack, 16 minutes to first race post time. Have a great day and stand by shortly for our track handicapper and tip sheet author, Ashley Mayu. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Fort Erie Racetrack. As we get set to kick off another week of racing, we have beautiful weather, seven races on today's program, and we'll kick things off on the turf course in a sprint, going a distance of five furlongs. This is allowance level, looking for their second lifetime win, and looking at the field, two horses stuck out to me. It's a six, Rock Barton, as well as the one, Get the News. Now, looking at Rock Barton, I think what I like about him is not only his local performance here was very strong over the turf, he finished second at this level, going seven furlongs, and just lost by a length. He had the lead at points in there, was kind of pressed throughout, really held his own, and kicked back a really strong number. Now, in his following starts at, up at Woodbine, I think there are a couple takeaways as well. He did face some tough competition, but his race two back in mid-August really catches my eye. I mean, it was a deep field of 12. It was $25,000 claimers, non-winners of two lifetime, and he finished third, beaten by just two and a half. He didn't take any respect on the tote board. He was 19 to 1 that day. That was going six furlongs. So now he's going to cut back a little bit more from that. And I do think five furlongs should be just fine for him, looking at his previous races and the way he kind of, you know, runs. He does sit from off the pace. That did play out pretty nicely on the Tuesday card last week. So I have no concerns about him. And it's really nice to see that strong local performance. Now, a horse making his first local start is the one Get the News. Primarily raced over the turf up at Woodbine and then Gulfstream Park. So looking at his races in the spring of 2019, he faced some really tough horses down at Gulfstream, was in a maiden special weight event, was in for a tag of 50, and constantly found himself getting a share. He finished third in three consecutive races there. Now he came up to Woodbine and he, you know, tried to take the, the levels in the maiden special weight, but really wasn't getting the performance that they wanted, so they dropped him in for a $40,000 tag when he broke the maiden. That was going seven and a half, and he did it on the front end. Um, he kept a task in there. Final time was 129 and two, which I think for that level is, is decent. And 
I think a performance like that puts him in the hunt. Now, unfortunately, if you look at his most recent starts, his numbers have kind of dropped, but he did find a second place finish most recently against Nonwares 2 Lifetime, but was in for a $7,500 tag and was claimed out of there. So we haven't seen him in some time. He's had a bit of a layoff. His works aren't eye-catching, but I'm not concerned knowing that he really likes the turf, and a few others in here have yet to show that. Now, I mentioned the six was a Joe Humber horse. He also sends out the seven, Seamus, who really caught my eye last year in his debut. He was very green. He broke slowly, was at the back of the pack, and just missed, was second, beaten by just half a length behind Monday Morning Memo. His next start, they tried him on the dirt. He missed again in there by half a length. And finally, when they sent him sprinting on the turf at today's distance against Special Weight Company, he got the job done. His numbers are a bit lower than others in here, especially the other two horses that I mentioned. But I'm excited to see him get back on the turf locally as he's hit the board in both. And I expect some improvement from his most recent races because I don't think he's a dirt horse. I think he has a knack for the turf. Horses have moved into the walking ring for the first race. Ten minutes to post time. Riders go up, they're on their way out for the first.
It's Get the News leading out the first race post parade from Fort Erie Racetrack. Owned and trained by Louis Cappy, hired to ride Melanie Pinto. Two is my Mark Andre. Trained by Ravendra Ragunath for Sheila Mohan in the Irons, Mark Lee Buchanan. Uno Champ 3 racing for Sue Andrushko with Chris Husbands aboard. Mad Sam is number four, conditioned by Des Maynard for Nadia Donolova. Hired to ride Helen Vanek. Spinos is number five, competing for Cindy Musto with Carl De Freitas for saddle duty. Sunny Singh, riding partner for Joy Elkins and Joe Humber on six, Rock Barton. Seamus is number seven, racing for Joe Humber in the Irons Pierre Melhot. Five furlongs on the turf for the first race, Allowance Field, starting off the rolling pick threes. There's 20 cent superfecta, rolling double, trifecta, exacta, win place, and show wagering on the first. Five minutes. Five minutes to post time to the opener from Fort Erie Racetrack.
Horses begin to make their way onto the turf course in preparation for the first race. Now the starting gate is being wheeled onto the turf course at the five for long starting point. Riders now instructed to take their horses to the gate. Time is running out for the 20 cent pick three, Superfecta, and all first race wagers from Fort Erie. They've arrived at the gate. First to walk up in at seven to five is favored Get the News. My Mark Andre Longshot stepped in. The other gray in the race, Uno Champ hovering about seven to one. Helen Vanek and Mad Sam take box four. Longest on the board, Spinos, post five. Rock Barton now co-favored in the last click. Seamus is last in. Just waiting on Seamus for gate seven. Stand by for a start. They're at the post and they're off. Came out in a very even looking line there. Rock Barton, Seamus jetting directly to the front from the outside and Get the News is going to be up there to attend the pace. My Mark Andre passed by Spinos on the outside. Uno Champ is second to last and Mad Sam is the trailer to the turn. Seamus was strongly away. Rock Barton chases along. Get the News is getting a good trip. Moving into the turn, Spinos on the outside is fourth. Two more lengths to My Mark Andre, three more to Uno Champ. 
champ and the trailer throughout has been Mad Sam. Seamus prompted along by Rock Barton. Get the news, has to pick it up a little bit more. Spinos on the outside fourth. Uno champ trying to mount a wide rally. They still chase Seamus. 23 and one front quarter. Seamus has to come home. Get the news is getting a rail run trying to get up there. Seamus, get the news is inching in. Seamus or get the news. Get the news up in time to nail down the first prize over Seamus. And then finishing third, it was Rock Barton with Uno Champ looking for fourth. Get the news. And Melanie Pinto and Louis Cappy score in the first. 58 and 1. The split times review of the first race, 23 and 1, 46 seconds. The five furlong wind time, 58 one fifth. Unofficially, get the news. The unofficial superfecta of the first race is 1763. 1763. Here is Get the News returning for the victory photograph of the first race. The Gray Roan five-year-old gelding by Tappet from Society Pages by Medagliadoro. Bred in Kentucky by Mayfair Speculators. Owned and trained by Louis Cappy. Fourth winning ride on the year for Melanie Pinto. Get the News wins the 2020 season's debut. Five on the turf in 58 and one when posted official.
480 on the win ticket by Get the News. Three dollars to place, two ten to show. Seamus, four ninety and three dollars. Six Rock Barton, two ten. The exacta thirty dollars thirty cents. The trifecta sixty nine ninety. The dollar superfecta one seven six three seventy seven dollars and seventy cents from the first race in Fort Erie. Here are the race two changes. Two Chairman's Venom, four pounds over. Three Gabby's Ballerina, two over. And five Madame Bovary, also two over. Race two, start of the early 20 cent pick four, starts a pick three. There's Superfecta rolling double. Trifecta exact a win place and show opportunities on race two from Fort Erie, six minutes. 16 minutes to post time at 1.47. PM. Race two kicks off the early pick four, and we have a field of fillies and mares looking for that first lifetime win, and they'll be going a distance of six furlongs over the main track. Now, the horses towards the inside of the gate, those two being the one hot copy and the two chairman's venom, they face each other here on opening day, and the others have yet to make a start, and I definitely think they have an advantage. The one hot copy is the morning line favorite and likely will enter the gate as the favorite. I think 
Looking at her performance here against that maiden special weight company, she finished second, beaten by just half a length. And she definitely re-rallied. I mean, looking at her entering the turn, she kind of backed off and I was a little concerned. And then late, she was closing hard, but she was simply second best. She, as the run line says, she was outgunned and that pretty much sums it up. I think she'll drop in for the $8,000 tag today and she looks to be the toughest competition on paper. Now the horse to her outside, the two chairman Venom, ran a decent race. First time off the layoff for her new connections. She finished fourth, beaten by two and three quarters, and she actually had a bad break. So she had a bit of an excuse. She wasn't as close as I would have hoped she would be. And I think today, Helen Vanek's really gonna work to hustle her out of the gate. And to me, she's got the fitness edge, so I definitely think she can get up for a share. Now, looking at the other horses, I did land on the four, one for Nikki. We'll be making her local debut and her first dirt start of her career. Now she's five for 14 in the money in her career, but what I like about her is she comes from off the pace, and if anyone locks up early, she should be able to close some. Her most recent race was over the Tapita at Woodbine where she finished fourth, beaten by just a length and a half, and late in the stretch, she did find herself on the lead, so the slight cut back seems like it would fit her well from her races as she often does close and make ground up, but then she finds herself getting leg weary in the final furlong. So I like her at the six furlongs. The barn has done well. Gary Chdobiak has sent out two horses, Mr. Nada and Snell Flicka, and they've both been second. So I'd be ready to see what this one can do, but I do think to be really competitive, she's still going to need a start.
They've moved into the walking ring for race two. Rider is up for race two. Introducing the field for race two. Hot copy is number one. Races for Michael J. Blake. Ownership of Annette Blake and Mark Stout. Hired to ride is Melanie Pinto. Chairman's Venom number two has Helen Vanek aboard. Trained by Julie Mathis for Joey G. Thoroughbreds. Sunny Singh Ryder for Pietro and Willie Armata on three. Gabby's Ballerina. One for Nikki is number four. Competes for Gary Chidobiak in the Irons. Howard Newell. Madame Bovary is number five. Races for Lucia Shirley with Brian Shane. Maiden claiming field for race two. Start of the early 20 cent pick four. Starts a rolling pick three. There's Superfecta rolling double. Trifecta exact to win place and show race two coming up next from Fort Erie.
Race two horses have reported back into the chute to the six furlong starting point. And the race two field is readying to report to the gate. Favored hot copy first to step in. Long shot Gabby's ballerina. Second choice, one for Nikki. Madame Bovary going to be in double digits. Last in Chairman's Venom. Stand by for a start. Race two. They're off. Clean start for all. And on the outside. There goes one for Nikki up in search of a position near the front, but uh, coming out the best and jetting to the front was Chairman's Venom. Hot Copy is going to be attending not far away and right there in on the fence. Then Madame Bovary to the outside of Gabby's Ballerina. Along the backstretch, Chairman's Venom and Helen Vanek making some big speed there. Hot Copy tries to reel in that leader. On the outside, still third, one for Nikki. Madame Bovary is fourth and two more lengths to the trailer to the turn. That's Gabby's Ballerina back of the group. And on down to the top of the stretch, they will go, making all of the tempo out on the lead has been Chairman's Venom. Chairman's Venom chased by Hot Copy. Round to the top of the stretch, Chairman's Venom. Hot Copy swinging out from third is 1-4 Nikki. 22-4, and 46-1. And and That's been a big speed display. Trying to bottom them out is Chairman's Venom. Hot Copy, no more to offer. On the outside, 1-4 Nikki. Chairman's Venom sent down the road by Helen Vanek. Chairman's Venom at 4-1 to one goes all the way. There is the place battle. Picking second on the outside, one for Nikki. Hot Copy was third and Madame Bovary was fourth. It's six furlongs, one eleven and one for Chairman's Venom.
Two four one five, the unofficial superfecta of race two. Two four one five. There's Chairman's Venom returning from race two. The Gray Orone filly now three by Society's Chairman. From True to Me by Yes It's True. Bred by the owner in Ontario, Joey G. Thoroughbreds, trained by Julie Mathis, the winning ride to Helen Venick. On the move from maiden special weight to maiden claiming, Chairman's Venom goes all the way in a snappy 111 one fifth. Race two results are official. Ten sixty on the win ticket, Chairman's Venom, four ninety to place, two twenty to show, one four Nikki, three ten and two ten. Hot copy two ten. The exacta thirty three sixty, that's thirty three sixty the exacta, the trifecta for two dollars. Fifty three dollars eighty cents. The dollar superfecta, two four one and five, thirty eight dollars fifteen cents. And the program's first a rolling double, twenty four dollars seventy cents. Our race replay and highlight show is on every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. on your TV Niagara. On the local Cochico system at Channel 700 in Fort Erie, Niagara Falls and the Niagara region. Post time from Fort Erie Racetrack on your TV Niagara, Channel 700, every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. The weight changes in race three. Red Rollin and Jade's Journey two pounds over. The third race, start of the programs, 20 cent pick five. 17 minutes to post time from Fort Erie Racetrack.
Race three kicks off the pick five, and we have a field of Phillies and Mares, non winners of three lifetime, in for a tag of 4,500. They'll be going five furlongs over the main track. Now, looking at this race as a whole, I thought if you're going to play the pick five, this was a race that you could not single. I would think that you'd have to go two, if not three horses deep on your ticket. Now, I landed on the one Glorious Freedom, but I'm going to be brutally honest. I think she's a vulnerable top selection. I kind of struggled to narrow it down. And the reason I ultimately went with her is last time out off a bit of a layoff, she ran pretty nicely considering the winner written was able to shake clear and faced no pressure whatsoever and Glorious Freedom still made up some ground in the end. I didn't think that race played out as the way it should have on paper. I thought that written and others would have faced more pressure, but because she didn't, I think the race was over from the start. Now my concern with Glorious Freedom is she has three starts here and she's been second every single time. But she has some decent races this winter down at Mahoning Valley. And she's probably the most accomplished so far this year. You know, if you look at the horse, the four in here documented has five stars in 2020, but has missed the board every time. So I do think Glorious Freedom has a bit of a fitness edge over some of the field. But it is concerning that she typically is just second best. Now the horse to her outside I think is going to be forwardly placed and that's the two red rolling. Both of her wins have come over the turf sprinting and in those she's been able to get to the front and she stayed there. Her only dirt start was her most recent where she finished fourth beaten by four and a quarter lengths but it was kind of a deep field. She really didn't take much respect and I think the excuse she had that day is she did face a bit of pressure first time on the dirt and she just faltered in the end. I like the way she's been training. I like to see Mark Lee Buchanan climb back aboard today because the the trainer jockey combo is quite strong here at 48. Last year they won at 22%. Finally, I looked at the horse to the outside, the five Jade's Journey. I'm expecting a big improvement from that race last week. I simply think something went amiss. Um, you don't see a horse like this kind of lose by 31 lengths and finish last. I was expecting a much better effort. I thought that she'd hit the board in that field. And I'm not sure what went wrong, but to know that the connections feel confident enough to race her back a week later, I think says a lot. And I'm expecting a much improved performance. She has two wins here at 40 over the dirt. Her maiden win was very decisive. She went to the front and drew off by six in the end. And then on the stretch out to a mile on a 16th, she once again found herself on the lead and had enough gas in the tank late. So her numbers, she had a 51 and a 54 buyer. That puts her into contention for the top spot. But I'm just going to have to take a little bit of a wait and see approach to see if they have things straightened out for her.
Hatfield has moved into the walking ring for race three in Fort Erie. You can keep up with all of the action at the track this year at FortErieRacing.com, including the live stream and the replays, the racing schedule, Ashley Mayu's free tip sheet and statistics, and much more. That's all of the action yours for free at FortErieRacing.com. Keep up with our 2020 season at FortErieRacing.com. Riders up, they're on their way out for race three. It's Glorious Freedom leading out the Race 3 Post Parade in Fort Erie. Trained by Elliot Sullivan for owner Bruno Schickadance. Hired to ride, Pierre Melhot. Ravendra Ragunath trains Red Roland 3 for Palma Legion. Ridden by Mark Lee Buchanan. Alert Kitten is number 3. Conditioned by Michael Cohen for Fortunato Galati. Kirk Johnson is aboard. Howard Newell riding for Barrington Cito and owner William McGowan on four documented. Jade's Journey, number five, completing this field. Trained by Kevin Buttigag for Anthony Kappen in the Irons, Sunny Singh. A claiming field at five furlongs on the main track in the start of the 20 cent pick five. The 20 cent pick five starting here on race three. In addition, to a rolling pick three, 20 cent superfecta, rolling daily double, trifecta exact to win place and show opportunities. Race three coming right up from Fort Erie.
Riders requested to bring their third race charges to the gate. Third race field has arrived at the gate. Time winding down for the 20 cent pick five and third race wagers. Eight to five second choice Red Roland steps in first. Slight favorite, Glorious Freedom in. Documented. Jade's Journey, second choice. Locked and loaded. Race three at the post. They're off. Good beginning on the outside for Jade's Journey, trying to beat them all out of there. Red Roland goes with that one, along with Alert Kitten and Documented in between. And the last one away, but catching up quickly to run through in on the fence was Glorious Freedom. Red Roland quickly assuming the front with Alert Kitten. And on the inside, Glorious Freedom now making her presence felt. Second to last, that's documented in Jade's Journey after a sharp leaving move is now the one that's trailing in the field. Red Roland around to the top of the stretch has had a long scrap with Alert Kitten tracked by Glorious Freedom, documented, and Jade's Journey is now five lengths back of the field. They come to the top of the stretch after a sizzling front quarter of 22 and 3, and they fan four out across the track. Alert Kitten comes to the lead. Red Roland heavily used. Here comes a well-rated Glorious Freedom. Glorious Freedom on by late and is widening the advantage. Glorious Freedom. For Pierre Melhot, a well-ridden out winner. Over Alert Kitten, Red Roland was third and Documented was fourth. Glorious Freedom prevails in race three as six to five choice in a minute and one. One three two four from race three is unofficial. The split times twenty two and three, half and forty six and one. The five furlongs a minute and one fifth.
There's Glorious Freedom returning from race three. The Dark Bear Brown, five-year-old mare by Winslow Homer. From Send for an Angel by Southern Halo. Bred in Florida by the owner Bruno Schickadans. Trained by Elliot Sullivan. The winning mount to Piedam El Hot. First win this year for Glorious Freedom. First in seven trips, the third lifetime tally. Five furlongs a minute, one fifth when posted official. Four sixty on the win ticket, Glorious Freedom, three ten and two twenty, Alert Kitten, six eighty and four twenty. Red Roland, three twenty, the exact of thirty eight seventy, the trifecta, a hundred and eighteen forty. The dollar superfecta combination one three two and four, two hundred and twenty two dollars eighty cents. The rolling daily double twenty four twenty, and the program's first pick three, forty five dollars and thirty five cents. You're now invited to watch in HD at FortErieRacing.com, including our live stream and the replays. For the racing schedule, the Ashley Mayu free tip sheet and statistics and much more. Watch live in HD, FortErieRacing.com. Here are the fourth race changes. One, it's nice to be nice. Four pounds over. Five, rubble and us was a vet scratch. Seven furlongs on the turf here in the fourth race. Start of the late 20 cent pick four. It's 20 minutes away from Fort Erie Racetrack.
We return to the turf in race four with another field of fillies and mares in for a tag of 8,000. And looking at this field, I think a lot of eyes are automatically going to go to the two pulled the goalie, who's also my top selection. She's a two-time winner here at Fort Erie and kind of looking at her career, it's been a bit interesting. She was a hot commodity in 2017 and 2018. She was claimed for 20,000 and then she was on the shelf for nearly a year and a half. Now she made her return to the races in June of 2019 here at Fort Erie where she won an optional claiming event quite nicely. Uh, the turf course came up yielding and she was still able to rally from towards the back of the pack. Now her connection sent her back up to Woodbine where she was based out of. She finished fifth in a $25,000 claiming event and I, did, I thought the race was kind of respectable. You know, she's only beaten by two lengths. She tried to close, but just simply couldn't get the job done. They sent her back here on Prince of Wales Day to race her again in an optional claiming event on the turf. And she proved to be much the best. And she was picked out of that race for $12,500 by her current connections, Elliot Sullivan. Now, he seemed to have struggled with her a little bit. I mean, she kind of failed as the favorite in the Molson Cup. And then they tried her on the Tapita, they tried her over the dirt at Mahoney Valley, and then at Turfway Park over the synthetic. She just seemed like a different horse. Her numbers kind of dropped drastically. But I think in that time off between January and March, they finally figured her out. She appreciated the six weeks rest, and she ended up winning with a 69 buyer against non-winners of two on the year at Turfway. I think getting back on the turf at Fort Erie, I think her form's gonna improve. And the way she's been training at Mountaineer, I mean, she's been very quick in the morning, so she's hard to ignore getting back here today. Now, the three Fleck, I do also really like. She has had four starts here at Fort Erie, two wins and two thirds. And in her first race of 2020, after having the winner off, she finished third, beaten by two and a half over the dirt against Optional Claiming Company. Her numbers aren't as great on the dirt as you can see from some of her races, but I think looking at her turf races, she's had some bigger buyers. She had a 67 in the Molson Cup where she finished third behind Auntie Catherine, who ran, I believe, an 80 that day. And I think at this distance, she's two for three. She's really hard to ignore. She definitely likes these two turn races here at Fort Erie, and I'm expecting some improvement second time off the layoff.
the fourth race horses have moved into the walking ring. Riders go up and they're on their way out for the fourth race. It's nice to be nice on the track for the fourth race. Campaigning for Nancy and Robert Warner with Mark Lee Buchanan up. Pulled the goalie, number two competes for Elliot Sullivan. Hired to ride, Emil Ramsemi. Flack is number three, trained by John Sims for the Bussy Carpenter Stable. Melanie Pinto aboard. She's 10 the hard way is number four. Sunny Singh at the reins, trained by Willie Armata for Alpine Stable. Five was a vet scratch. Six is Glib Marilyn, races for Deb Rombus. Hired to ride, Kirk Johnson. Seven furlongs on the turf course in race four, start of the late 20 cent pick four. Starts a rolling pick three. There's Superfecta, daily double. Trifecta exact to win, place, and show. The fourth coming up next from Fort Erie Racetrack.
Starting gate takes position at the seven furlong point on the turf course. And now the fourth race field makes their way onto the turf course.
Time is running out for the late pick four and fourth race wagers. Beginning to load. It's nice to be nice. First in, carrying a 9 to 2 price. Favored pulled the goalie, stepped in. Three to one offering is Fleck to gate three. She's 10 the hard way, will be the long shot of the field. Glib Maryland to complete the line. Stand by for a start. Race four at the post. They're off. And it's pulled the goalie that's jumped out of the gate extremely well. She's 10 the hard way. Moves up on the outside to contest the early top honors. Glib Maryland running on the outside of Fleck. And two more lengths back to a reserved. It's nice to be nice. So crossing over to front the field midway in that first turn is She's 10 the hard way. She's 10 the hard way. Stacks them up single file on the way to the back stretch except for Glib Maryland going on the outside. She's 10 the hard way, stretching the legs away to a four-length lead there. Pulled the goalie, starts to close up a little bit again in second. And then Glib Maryland has been running wide, Fleck along the inside, and now it's nice to be nice. Got a rail run there and skimmed right on through to be much closer to the tempo. She's 10 the hard way, then pulled the goalie. And on the outside, the gray Glib Maryland, 24-3 and three front quarter. They're on their way, and they start to make the bend onto the final turn. She's 10 the hard way, pulled the goalie. Is pulled up on the outside by Emil Ramsamy, and with no urging, is now on to level terms with the tempo setter at the top of the stretch and they're starting to quicken from here after a front half of 49 seconds flat pulled the goalie has taken the stretch lead from she's 10 the hard way it's nice to be nice then glib maryland fleck on the outside pulled the goalie and emil ram sammy are long gone to win it very stylishly place photograph there she's 10 the hard way tried to hold second over a charging glib maryland and it's nice to be nice was fourth as pulled the goalie runs the turf seven furlongs in 125 and one In the print of the place photograph, two, four, six, and one are posted. 24 and three, 49 seconds. Three quarters, 113, and the seven furlongs, 125 and one.
Here is Pulled the Goalie returning from the fourth race. The Chestnut Seven Year Old Mare by Parading. From Bag of Stars by Devil's Bag. Bred in Kentucky by Richard Forbush. Now owned and trained by Elliot Sullivan. And the winning ride to Emil Ramsemi. Off to a great start here in the 2020 Fort Erie meet. Already four wins in just nine rides for Emil Ramsemi. And that's the second win in four starts this year and 10th career win for Pulled the Goalie. Posted results are now official. Two four six one from race four. Three eighty on the win ticket by pulled the goalie. Two seventy to place. Two ten to show. She's ten the hard way was longest on the board and salvage second. Ten dollars to place. Four dollars to show. Glib Maryland three ten to show. The exact at twenty nine seventy. The trifecta a hundred and fifteen dollars ten cents. Dollar superfecta two four six and one seventy six dollars seventy five cents. The rolling daily double ten fifty. The pick three ended on the fourth race, $32.25. Now on display, the place photograph from the fourth race. Four, she's 10 the hard way at the inside. Edges out number six, Glib Maryland on the outside. Four over six, place photo now posted from race four. Join HPIBet.com and get $100 when you bet your first $100 and your first bet will be on HPIBet.com. HPIBet.com giving you the ability to wager online or on site. You can wager on over 500 tracks from around the world watching four at a time and receive the HPIBet rewards and much more. Join for free today to see much more at HPIBet.com. Here are the race five changes to Sepolinus Vet Scratch. Time two dance number three, first time gelding. For Dr. Robert, two pounds over. Race five starts this program's final 20 cent pick three. 
19 minutes to post time to race five from Fort Erie.
Race five, we have a maiden special weight event for Colts and Geldings. And looking at the field top to bottom, I have to think all eyes are going to be on the one Sophia Slugger. He comes into this race off of five consecutive on the board finishes at Turfway Park. And his numbers are by far the best in the field. Now, looking at his most recent races there, he comes off three consecutive third place finishes. And when he dropped in for the $7,500 tag last time out, that's where I actually saw the most improvement for him. And it wasn't just the class relief. I think the big thing was the trip that he got. Typically, he's kind of hustled towards the front and doesn't have enough left in the tank late. But last time, they had him just sit a length or two further back, and he made one run in the stretch to miss just by a neck. And I think his versatility could be key here. Now, if he's forwardly placed, I don't mind because they're only going five furlongs. But if he decides to rate, at least I know that he can make one big move late. Looking at others in here, two will be making their first starts since leaving the barn of Mike Doyle. And one of those is the three time to dance. Well, I think he's going to need a start. He has shown a little bit. If you look at his race three back over the turf against Mead in 25s, he finished fourth in a deep field of 12. Yes, he was well beaten, but it showed me that he can be in the mix a bit early, and I think that's going to be key here on the dirt. I also like that he does have a nice breeze here two back. It was the fastest of six at the distance in a nice 36 flat, so that gives me a little bit more confidence making that first dirt start today. They're in the walking ring for race five, under 10 minutes to post time.
It's Riders Up for race five. Introducing race five horses on post parade. Sophia Slugger, one, has Kirk Johnson aboard, trained by Barrington Cito, for Radcliffe Stable and Doug Terry. Number two is a vet scratch. Time two dance three, conditioned by Gary Chidobiak for Ellen Osborne. The rider is Howard Newell. Dr. Robert is number four. Conditioned by Joe Aiello and partners, trained by Sharon Chicato, hired to ride Brian Chain. Charlie's Game, number five, trained by Chris Jolene for Leah Ann Woolat. The rider is Pierre Melhot. Made an allowance field at five furlongs on the main track. Start of the program's last rolling pick three. Five minutes to race five from Fort Erie.
Starting gate now in position at the five for a long point. Time winding down for race five wagers. The race five field is moving up to the gate. Even money favorite, Sophia Slugger, first in. Third choice, time to dance. Longest on the board, Dr. Robert. Second choice, Charlie's Game. Standing by for a start to race five at the post. They're off. 
All four of them have come out well and in a good line there. And right along the inside is Sophia Slugger. Then time to dance, Dr. Robert and Charlie's game to the extreme outside. Time to dance is going to the lead over Sophia Slugger. And on the extreme outside, that's Charlie's game overtaking Dr. Robert, who is now trailing. So it's a clear lead established into the turn. Time to dance by a tight length. And still trying to move up on the outside determinedly. That was Charlie's game. Sophia Slugger back along the inside. And three more to Dr. Robert around to the top of the stretch. Quick first quarter of 22 and 3. Time to dance. We'll try to go all the way, but coming out on him on the outside to the grandstand side is Charlie's game. Charlie's game looming bold. Sophia Slugger down in on the fence. They still haven't reached time to dance. Time to dance. Digging and digging. Sophia's Slugger inching in to win it. Sophia's Slugger in on the fence for Kirk Johnson. Got there to run down. Time to dance. Charlie's game was third. And then last to finish, Dr. Robert Sophia's Slugger right in on the fence in 58 and 3. One three five four posted unofficial. Twenty two and three. Forty five and three. And the wind time fifty eight and three for the five furlongs. Sophia Slugger won posted official. Sophia Slugger back from race five. The chestnut three-year-old gelding by Tapature from Macho Woman by Macho Uno. Bred in Ontario by Brad Auger. Trained by Barrington Cito for Doug Terry and Radcliffe Stable. Kirk Johnson for the winning ride. Gets into the win column this year. For many years, one of the top riders here at Fort Erie. Could be on his way now for much improved fortunes in 2020. Kirk Johnson, as race five results are now posted official. Five ten to win on Sophia Slugger. Three dollars to place. Time two dance. Three seventy to place. No show wagers. No superfecta on race five. The exacta fourteen twenty. The trifecta nineteen dollars ten cents. The rolling daily double eight ten. Pick three ended on race five. Ten dollars seventy five cents. And the early pick four seventy four dollars fifty cents.
our live racing schedule for the entire 2020 campaign at Fort Erie Racetrack. Loading into the gate each Monday and Tuesday, 1.20 p.m. That's right through to mid-October. Post times 1.20 p.m. With the pre-race show on the air at 12.45 p.m. every Monday and Tuesday from Fort Erie Racetrack. Here are the sixth race changes. One strategic vision, two pounds over. Two Mocal, four over. The sixth race started this program's final rolling double. There's Superfecta, Trifecta Exacta, win place and show. Race six coming up from Fort Erie.
Your attention, we have a late veterinarian scratch from race six just being announced. Five Salem Street has become a late vet scratch from rate six. Once again, we've had a late vet scratch from this sixth race. Five Salem Street will not go. Riders going up. Vet scratch of number five, Salem Street from the sixth race. And those of you in the pick three, pick four, and pick five wagers, you will be getting the post time favorite in lieu of five, Salem Street, the late vet scratch here out of race six. Sixth race tickets involving five eligible for exchange or refund. Strategic Vision, number one, leading the sixth race post parade with Helen Vanek aboard, trained by Julie Mathis for Pier 1 Stables. Mocal is number two, conditioned by Sharon Chicato for even Steven Stables, Brian Shane riding.
Almost Dancer is number three. Chris Husband's aboard for Michael Bennett. And number four is Flamborough Jewel, Pierre Mel Haunt up, conditioned by Claudia Robstein for owner Zig John Grinsteins. Five Salin Street was a late vet scratch. Seven minutes to the sixth race from Fort Erie, starting off the last rolling double of the program. Under four minutes to post time, starting a taking position. Race six, we have an allowance event for non-winners of two lifetime. And while the field is compact, this is the sort of race that you can make a case for anyone. And we have three horses that broke their maiden tier at Fort Erie and did it quite easily over the dirt. We have a horse coming out of Woodbine that the most recent two races are lackluster, but the maiden win was impressive and seems to be training well over the training track. And finally, you have one horse that's the really the only horse that was able to close from off the pace in the debut, but next time out clearly had some issues. So bit of a head scratcher, very wide open, good betting race. I went to the four, Flamborough Jewel. I think has a lot going for him. You know, the debut was quite strong. And for me, that's what stood out. Had a nice buyer number first time out against Maiden Special Weight Company going five and a half and was able to just open up on the field, really wasn't asked and won by the five and a quarter. The two recent breezes have both been the fastest at the distance and having two bullet works like that suggests this one is ready to roll. Now, the second start of the career for this one off about a two month layoff really was lackluster. He was never really involved in the race. It seemed like a bit of an ambitious spot 
And I don't even know if he liked the tapita. So like I said, a lot of signs point to this one getting back on the dirt today. The horse to his outside the five sailing street spaced winners a couple times and really hasn't shown much. I mean, was finishing eighth and beaten by eight and a quarter. And then prior to that was seventh beaten by six. Now in the maiden score was going six and a half furlongs over the tapita up at Woodbine against maiden tens and got to the front and really wasn't pressured and said goodbye early, ended up being kind of ridden out in the end to win by four and a quarter. So this one can be forwardly placed and seems to prefer it, but if you even go back to some of those earlier races in that third start of the career, he was able to close a bit from off the pace and just missed by a head. So a lot to look at, consider. Obviously this horse is making his dirt debut, which for me is usually something that I tread lightly um, I'm a little concerned sometimes with horses coming in from Woodbine, especially if they haven't had good dirt works, but he's the exception because he does have a good dirt work. The training track at Woodbine is a dirt surface. And if you look at that work two back, it was a bullet, the fastest of 21 and the time was quite swift, 59 and three. So I do have a feeling this one should have no problem tackling a new surface today. Finally, the horse on the rail, the one strategic vision. I like him because he's had a start at this level and he was third beaten by two. He simply was kind of hard chasing throughout, but it's interesting to note that the top two finishers in there, Speedy Connor and Paul Playa, they came back in their following starts to win. So it was a tough group. It was a good quality um, competition for him. And if you look at the way he broke his maiden here, it was flawless. He too got to the front like so many others in here and shook clear to win by seven and a quarter going longer than today's distance. So I don't think he needs the lead. He ran a great race last time out against winners at this level. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him take some play for those reasons. Riders under instruction to take their horses over to the gate. Strategic Vision and Helen Vanek among the top two choices. Almost Dancer stepping in, nine to two the price, two in and two to go. Mocal reluctant, now steps up. Mocal offered at six to one, longest Flamborough Jewel to complete the line. One of the top two choices, stand by for a start, race six. 
They're off. And they came out in a good line there. Strategic vision. Helen Vanek, who better to hustle one right along the inside. Then across the track are Mocal Almost Enter and Flamborough Jewel. As they move down the back stretch, Strategic Vision designated to set the tempo. Mocal on the outside. And then as they move into the turn, it's Flamborough Jewel just ahead of Almost Enter. Around that turn, Strategic Vision has been in command all of the way. Helen Vanek, an expert at this kind of situation, back in second. That's Mocal, then Flamborough Jewel, and almost Dancer. The opening quarter was 22 and 3, deceptively quick there. Strategically Vision, Strategic Vision, the top end target. Mocal, shown some clear track. A lot of space to make up for Flamborough Jewel, no more to offer. Same situation for almost Dancer. Strategic Vision, Helen Vanek has done it again in brilliant front end fashion. Strategic Vision romps over Mocal. Flamborough Jewel, third best, but way back, and then almost answer, as Strategic Vision wires them easily, 58 and 1. And it will be a winning favorite there for Strategic Vision off at 4 to 5. Number 2, Mocal, save second. Four, Flamborough Jewel third, and then three, Almost Dancer. One, two, four, three, the unofficial with a winning favorite from race six. Strategic Vision was back as the sixth race winner, giving the connections a double on the program earlier with Chairman's Venom. Here in the sixth was Strategic Vision for trainer Julie Mathis and rider Helen Vanek. Owned by Pier 1 Stables, the four-year-old gelding by Court Vision from Blonde Mish by Langfuer, wins the 2020 racing debut. The five furlongs in 58 one fifth. It's official. Twenty two and three, forty six seconds, fifty eight and one, the five for long strategic vision, three seventy on the win ticket, two forty, two ten. Mocal three ninety and two seventy. Flamborough Jewel two ten. The exact of one and two, thirteen forty, the trifecta one, two and four, thirty dollars forty cents. The superfecta one, two, four and three, seventeen dollars. There was a consolation double because of the lateness of the scratch of number five, Salem Street. That consolation double won five, four dollars even. The regular daily double of one and one, eight twenty, and the pick three ended on race six, six dollars even, with a winning favorite, Strategic Vision.
in the seventh race. That's the scene of the daily 20 cent jackpot high five. And we have a carryover of $8,168 into this event. The jackpot high five carryover, more than $8,100 coming into the seventh race. Seventh race changes, one dressed in chocolate will be two pounds over, and first time Lasix on number one. Five, my final trick, four over. Six, awesome flight, one over. Seven, Einstein's babe, two pounds over. 18 minutes to the seventh race. Offering the 20 cent jackpot high five.
wrap up things here in race seven, a maiden special weight event for fillies and mares on the turf. And this is our biggest field so far this season. There's 10 runners in here. So kudos to the race office for assembling this event. I really think the payoffs could be quite nice in the trifecta and the superfecta as we see horses trying turf for the first time, cutting back and distance. There's a lot of directions you could go and that sometimes turns out to be quite rewarding in the end. The direction that I chose was the eight, not a house bra off that most recent performance. She was second behind a very nice uh, filly by the name of Perfect Mine, a Charles 50 homebred who took a lot of the money and performed like we all thought she would. She was simply the best that day. With that said, not a house bra was kind of the best of the rest. I mean, she was very clear for second. She was eight and a quarter lengths behind Awesome Flight, who is the sixth horse in here today. So they'll square off again. I just think that effort, if she can kind of transform that form onto the turf, she'll be quite tough in here, knowing that she's got some early foot. Speaking of the turf side of things, looking at her pedigree, she's out of an arch mare by the name of Christmas Prospect, who never broke her maiden, but in her three starts, she did have a second and a third over the turf at Hollywood Park and Gulfstream Park. So I'm not very concerned about the turf. I think she should handle it quite nicely. Going to give the number five my final trick one more shot today. I endorsed her last week underneath and was very disappointed. She finished last in that same race we were just talking about, beaten by 19 lengths. I really don't know what happened. I mean, she just kind of came up empty. So I like her second off the layoff. And I think with her, the turf isn't really um, a bad thing for her. You look at her debut, she debuted over the Tapita against Maiden 40s and she kind of finished in the mid pack there, six, beaten by four and a half. The buyer was decent. I mean, that's one of the better buyer numbers that we've seen in this field. So I'm just thinking that if she liked the tapita, she might like the turf today. And her trainer, Daryl Hasmatali, has done very well with turf sprinters here. He had a nice mare by the name of Bangla Dancer. This kind of uh, contributed to that turf sprint percentage of 43% as far as wins are concerned. Finally, I'll go to the nine tricker Ration, who's had plenty of opportunities to break the maiden. She's 0 for 19. And she comes into this race off a nice third place finish on the dirt. She was just beaten by half a length in there. And that was her first time hitting the board on the dirt. Now looking at her turf form, she's 0 for 5. She's never hit the board. And that's a bit alarming. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking getting onto the turf today here at Fort Erie might make a difference. And her tapita races up at Woodbine, they're not bad. I mean, if you go back to her most recent, which was on September 20th at Woodbine against $7,500 maiden claimers, she rallied from last to just missed by half a length, finished third. So she has some decent races. She has some other third place finishes, a second place finish. So I wouldn't be surprised to see her kind of hang in here and get a minor share today. Best of luck. That was our track handicapper, Ashley Mayu, and you can check out her free tip sheet every race day, FortEerieRacing.com, under the betting tab, and there you'll find the free tip sheet authored by our Ashley Mayu.
Moving into the walking ring for the seventh race. After completion of this event, we're back with you tomorrow. First of eight races at 1.20 p.m. End of interest, the card concludes tomorrow with seven furlongs on the turf and a wonderful nine-horse field. That will be the Tuesday feature to conclude the program tomorrow with a, a large field on the turf course in the eighth race on Tuesday. It all begins at 1.20 p.m. tomorrow with the pre-race TV show on the air at 12.45 p.m. from Fort Erie Racetrack. Riders up. The call goes out for the seventh race. Dressed in chocolate, leading the seventh race post parade. Mark Lee Buchanan to ride, trained by Noel Williams for Ron McIntyre. Two is Wick and Sense, competing for Norm Davies with Chris Husmans in the saddle. Three Stormy Susie, partnered by Kirk Johnson. Julie Mathis, conditioning for Pier 1 Stables. Next on the parade is five, My Final Trick, services of Helen Vanek. For owner and trainer, Daryl Husmatelli. Six is Awesome Flight, conditioned by Paul Lepian for MPP Stables. The jockey is Carl DeFreitas. Einstein's Babe, number seven, Brian Shane aboard, conditioned by Stephen Cathcart for owner, Candace Warwick. Not a housefrau, number eight. Connections are Joe McKinnon, trainer Claudia Rabstein, and in the irons, Pierre Mailhot. Trickeration, number nine. 
trained by Barrington Sido for Radcliffe Stable. Rider is Howard Newell. Forrest Lass. Number 10 races for Annette and Michael Blake in the Irons, Melanie Pinto. Seventh race, offering the 20 cent jackpot high five, the carryover pool, more than $8,100 into this event. There's also 20 cent superfecta, trifecta exacta, win place and show on the seventh race finale, this program from Fort Erie. Seventh race horses begin to file onto the turf course. Now the starting gate takes position at the five for long point on the turf course.
and the riders now requested to bring their horses to the gate for the seventh race. Time is winding down for the 20 cent jackpot high five and all seventh race wagers. Dressed in chocolate, longest on the board is first to step in. We can sense now one of the longest on the board. Next to arrive at the gate. Stormy Susie at seven to one. Pennies from above is double digits. So is my final trick in the five gate. Awesome flight. Another long shot Einstein's babe at thirty to one. Not a housefrau. Going to go off favored, it appears. Just two to go. Trickeration, five to one respect. And the second choice, Forrest Lass. Stand by for a start for the seventh. They're at the post. They're off. Good level beginning for all, and it's not a housefrau that tries to jet to the early lead. Stormy Susie is out fast. Awesome flight in the middle of the track. From the outside, Trickeration and Forest Latch have flashed early speed. It's two more lengths back to Pennies from above along the outside. Einstein's Babe is third from last, moving into the turn. As they move past the quarter, 22 and 2, the tempo hot and heavy made by Nada Hausfrau. Nada Hausfrau over to the top of the stretch. The next closest pursuer is Stormy Susie. Wick and Sense lost ground to the rear of the field. Not a Hausfrau. Stormy Susie first to make the turn. Forrest Lass is way out on the grandstand side with a gaining trickeration. And Awesome Flight is in between horses. Not a Hausfrau trying to steal away on the field. Here comes Stormy Susie one more time. I Einstein's Babe, the long shot from a long way back. Here's the wire. Stormy Susie might have got it just by the red shadow roll to run down. Not a housefrau and long shot Einstein's Babe was third. Stormy Susie was off at 7-1 to one and appears to have won a close one in the seventh. 59-1.
Three, eight, seven, and five posted so far from the seventh race. Three, eight, seven, five. 22 and 2, 46 and 3, and the turf 5 furlongs, 59 one fifth. Stormy Susie. Stormy Susie back from the seventh race, concluding a huge day training for the Julie Mathis stable row. Third winner sent out on the day by trainer Julie Mathis, owned by Pier 1 Stables. Kirk Johnson executes the winning ride to perfection. The Dark Bayer Brown, three-year-old filly by Stormy Atlantic, from Smart Susie by Smart Strike. Bred in Ontario by Dr. B. Van Aaron. Tripling up trainer Julie Mathis on the day. Stormy Susie, 59 and 1 when made official. And stand by for the 20 cent jackpot high five details. The unofficial jackpot high five is going to be three eight seven five ten. Three eight seven five ten.
Here are the payoff prices from the seventh race. Stormy Susie was off at seven to one and kicks back 1780 onto the win ticket. Seven to place, 520 to show. Not a house for our race favorite, finished second, 330 and 270. Einstein's Babe, off at 30 to one, finished third at 790 on the show ticket. The exact of 5180, the trifecta for $2, $539.80. The Superfecta for $1,902.75. The Jackpot High Five, 387 $4,727.12. The Final Rolling Double, 47.40. The Last Pick Three, 38.15. The late pick four, 8620, and this program's $1 pick five, $284.45. And again, the jackpot high five, 387510, the combination, $4,727.12. That's the 20 cent winning ticket for more than $4,700. Now on display, the win photograph showing three, Stormy Susie, defeating number eight, not a house frau. Three over eight, the win photo of the seventh on display. Our live racing schedule this year, each Monday and Tuesday, first post at 1.20 p.m., back with you tomorrow. For an eight-race agenda at 1.20 p.m., pre-race show on the air at 12.45 p.m., and tomorrow's program concludes with another turf course showcase, nine-horse field set to go in the finale in the eighth race on Tuesday with post time at 1.20 p.m. tomorrow. Become a member today at hpibet.com and get $100 when you've wagered your first $100 and a first bet on hpibet.com. Membership includes the ability to bet online or on site. Watch over 500 tracks from around the world and you can watch four tracks at the same time and be receiving HPI Bet rewards and much more. Join for free today at hpibet.com. Your TV Niagara, channel 700 on the local Kojiko system for post time from Fort Erie Racetrack every Thursday at 8 p.m. That's our weekly highlight and replay show, Your TV Niagara, Thursdays at 8 p.m., channel 700 in Fort Erie, Niagara Falls, and the entire Niagara region. Watch live in HD at FortErieRacing.com. You'll be able to receive the live stream and replays, racing schedule, Ashley Mayu's free tip sheet and statistics, and much more. Watch live now in HD, FortErieRacing.com. Now on behalf of our horse people, the TV production team, the racing officials, management, and staff, we'd like to thank you for being with us for Live Racing 2020 from Fort Erie Racetrack. And on Tuesday, first of eight races at 1.20 p.m., the card concluding tomorrow, with a nine-horse field in a turf event. That's to conclude the Tuesday card tomorrow. Thanks a lot for being with us. Have a great Monday evening, and see you Tuesday. Good afternoon from Fort Erie Racetrack.
FortErieRacing.com.